We're going to build this app that allows you to encrypt and decrypt messages using the Caesar cipher. So let's start by creating a new Android project. We'll just leave this stuff alone for now. We'll start with an empty activity and we'll wait for Android Studio to finish. We're going to build this user interface. At the top, we're going to use two edit text boxes, which are going to be plain text edit text boxes. In the middle, for entering the shift number, we're also going to use another edit text box, but this time a number is only one. At the bottom, where it says key, we're going to use a uh, label, which in Android Studio is called a text view. And then we have two regular buttons for the encrypt and the decrypt. Let's get started. We're going to start off now by going over to the main XML file and we're going to build our user interface. I'm using Android 2.2 for this so it starts off with constraint layout uh, which is a little bit harder than the relative layout we used in our previous apps but that's okay. We're going to delete this hello text because we don't need that. I'm going to start off by placing two edit text boxes at the top of the screen. These are going to be plain edit text boxes. Later on when we enter the shift number, we'll use a numbers only one, uh, which will bring up the numbers only keyboard, but for these we'll allow the user to have access to the full keyboard. I'm going to delete this text here and replace it with a hint. Now we're going to add a shift number over here. And we're going to put two buttons here, a one for the encrypt and the decrypt. And then underneath, we're going to put the key where we're going to display the original alphabet and the shifted alphabet. Here we're going to use a text view. Uh, the difference between the edit text boxes that we used up here in the text view is that only the computer can write the text view. Here, the user or the computer can uh, alter these fields. Now over here, uh, I'm going to change these so that they go all the way across. and likewise with this one and here also I'm going to make it a little bit larger so when I click this button down here it reviews it reveals the larger menu and I'm gonna scroll down to where it says text size and I'm going to uh, change that to make it a little bit larger and you can see it got bigger over here. Now we're going to change what's displayed initially on each of these. So to hint to the user to enter the shift number. And um, here I will put in the word key initially, although that will eventually get replaced with the alphabet. And now here this button should say encrypt, and this one decrypt. And now we also want to change the internal representations of each of these. So here, for example, you can see default uh, references are given. We're going to replace these with much more explicit references. We're now almost finished with our layout work. As the name implies for a constraint layout, we need to name some constraints. Let me just show you very quickly what happens one time if we don't put any constraints in here. If I was to run the emulator right now, you can see that all the components are going to pile up in the top left corner, which of course is not what we want. 
So what we need to do is we need to create some constraints using these little bubbles. Now, for a simple layout like this, the easiest thing to do is to allow Android Studio to create the constraints for you by making its best guess. And the way we do that is by pressing this little plus button right here. And you can see that everything is now all constrained. And if I was to run the emulator again, you can see now after the constraints have been added that everything is placed well on the screen. Let's have a look at the Java side now. And now let's turn our attention to the main Java code that we're going to need to connect the components we just created on the user interface side to the Java side. So inside our main activity, we're going to declare some state variables. And we're going to have these shown, each of which is going to correspond uh, to one of the components we just had in our user interface. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an initialization routine and we're going to call that initialization routine from inside the onCreate method. Let's have a look at that initialization routine. Here inside the initialization routine we connect each of the buttons and edit text and other components on the user interface side to the corresponding Java variable. And here below, we have set up button listeners for the two buttons in our app, the uh, encrypt button and the decrypt button. And what we're doing inside the button listeners is that we're printing a message to the message log showing that we are recognizing the button press. And then we're uh, calling these encrypt and decrypt uh, routines, which is uh, what you're going to have to write. For